How are you this week, Tara? You had a big kitty adoption thing. We did. We had our uh, annual kitten shower at the at the shelter. Dan built a kitten ball pit. Okay, pause, pause. You the, the term kitten shower. I think we have two different conceptions of what that might that term might mean. <laughs> it's like a baby shower, but kitten. So the idea is. It's an adoption event, but we ask people to bring a donation of, like, kitten food or toys, and we have a big playpen that they put it in. So it's, like, not we, like, throw kittens at you. Because, yeah, that that was what I was thinking, and that kind of sounds awesome. We do not make Not going to lie. Um, <laughs> but we do have a lot of kittens. Unfortunately, Dan built this sweet ball pit, and we tested it on Friday. With this like super rambunctious litter of kittens that loved it. And then it was going to be in the lobby. And the litter of kittens that were in the lobby were all very, very shy, scaredy kittens who were terrified of the ball pit. So it didn't really get used at the event very much. Aww. But he's going he's gonna to make some little adjustments that it needs and then we'll bring it back so they can use it for photo shoots and future events. But, like, the rambunctious kittens that were in a different room loved it. Nobody peed in it, no. They were afraid to get in it. <laughs> Only one kitten would get in it. And that was little Okoye. Because the litter that was in the lobby were all named after Marvel characters. So we had Thor, Raimonda, Okoye, Shuri, and Zandarian. I don't really know where they got that. Like, there's a lot of other female Marvel characters you could have pulled before... An alien race. I don't know. And then we had Stark and Nakia. And I feel like they missed an opportunity because Stark was a little black kitten with a little white triangle here. And I'm like, how is he not T'Challa? You've got the whole Black Panther cast here. But most of the kittens are on hold for adoption. That's good. Exciting. More kittens will come in over the summer, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, if there's anything we don't have a shortage of in the world, it's freaking kittens. It's true. They stay in for pets. But um, it was a fun day. Didn't have any parents leaving their children unattended with the kittens this year, so that's good. Oh, God, don't do that. They're not toys. I usually work, yeah, I usually end up working as basically a kitten bouncer because people are just like, oh, go see the kittens. And then you have kids like screaming at the kittens and trying to grab them and their parents don't watch them. So I'm usually there to be like, don't do that. It's a tiny living thing. Yeah. All right. Well, it is it is time. Oh God! But I didn't get the. I get, you know what? I do so many things on the show, and I didn't get the intro queued up. And I, I'm like, I got everything right. Wait, no, I didn't. I mean, you are very new to this. Yeah. I, I mean, I've only been doing this for 19 years. You know, <laughs> I, I'm a novice when it comes to doing this. The show all this. can vote. Don't remind me. All right. Let's get underway. It is time for the nonsense. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And we're starting with one this week that I kind of love because it's a nice little intersection of very cool pop culture and complete imbeciles. They just they just collide together. Um, did did you uh, enjoy uh, Good Omens? I did. Was that not they the were, best? Yeah, there were pieces of the book I was sorry they didn't bring over. Like I would have liked to see it go ten episodes so they could fit some more stuff in, but I was very happy with it. Yes, it was excellent. Um, but not everyone was happy with it, Tara. Yeah. In fact, some people were so unhappy. With good omens, that they they said did it did a a a, uh, a petition like they do, um, to uh, have uh, to have it canceled, and, and not to cut all women out like most of the petitions we see these days. They, they wanted it canceled and completely removed from Netflix. Done. Congratulations, you win. <laughs> U.S. Christian group condemns Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett's story as making Satanism appear normal, but petition wrong company. More than 20,000 Christians have signed a petition calling for the cancellation of Good Omens, 
the uh, television series adapted by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman's 1990 fantasy novel, unfortunately addressing their petition to Netflix when the series was made by Amazon Prime. Also, there's nothing to cancel. No, it's not coming back. It's done. It's done. It's over. That's it. Go home. Yeah. So, double good job. Um, I mean, you win. It won't be back for season two on Netflix. Christians marshaled by the Return to Order campaign, an offshoot of the U.S. Foundation for a Christian Civilization, uh, got more than 20... So, like, the fundamentalists among the fundamentalists. The names here. The U.S. People that flog themselves for watching television. The U.S. Foundation for a Christian Civilization. Civilization with an S, by the way. Spelled the European way. The U.S. found... Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, okay. They say that Good Omens is another step to making Satanism appear normal, light, and acceptable. Mock God's wisdom. God, they complain, is voiced by a woman. They were... Really? They, they had it. There you go. It was... Get women out of things. Uh, Francis McDormand. The Antichrist is a, quote, normal kid. Most importantly, this type of video makes light, light of truth, error, good, and evil and destroys the barriers of horror that society still has for the devil. They are calling on Netflix to cancel the show. You know what? I bet these guys were, like, so happy to get a win, they didn't realize they were complete yeah. imbeciles. You know what I really wonder sometimes? I really, really, really dearly hope that God is like Leslie Jones. <laughs> and when all these motherfuckers get to the pearly gate, Leslie Jones is there and it's just like, let me, no, no, you're, you're in the wrong place. You want to be in a place ruled by a man? That's, that's my hope. I just, I just see Leslie Jones at the pearly gates, giving the middle finger to all these fucking Christians. It really says a lot about these folks. They cannot do their own homework. Yeah, it's not that hard. Literally all the commercials, the Amazon logo comes up. I mean, for five, it's, not that hard. it's on the Wikipedia page. They've been shipping special Amazon boxes with the ad. If you have Amazon Prime, you probably have a box with Crowley and Zerfail on it. We didn't get one. We want, we want I, it at shelter, but not at home. I wanted one. I was like, oh, that sounds cool, you know, but yeah, we didn't get one. They are cool. Damn it. That would have kept that shit. Collector's edition shipping boxes. <laughs> yeah. But, but like. And yeah, Fluffernutter's bringing up a point. Netflix actually has a show called Lucifer. Yeah. That is a horrible, well, I watch it because it's fun trash, but boy, is it a bastardization of the comic it's, it's based on. It's a show. They just, they just took the bare bones of that comic and wrapped the CW all around it. If you wanted to take a swipe at Netflix. Yeah, there's actually a show called Lucifer. Fucking cover. It's they're not even screwing around. It's here. It's the devil show. Yeah. And he's the protagonist. He's the, he's the good the guy. Well, it's... like, how could you get this more wrong? I, I it's, it's this is making me very sad because I, I can't. I've said this before. I, great. I love incompetent fundamentalists, man. I've said this before. Just keep being incompetent. I will say this again. We deserve a better class of villain. Okay? It's just, it's, it's disheartening. Because when you're a kid, you grow up thinking the bad guys are like Lex Luthor and shit. They are like plotting and they have fucking, Jesus. you know, and, and they, they have like, you know, machines and they have like fucking exoskeletons and they have like evil aliens and all this shit together. And no, they're just fucking imbeciles. And then in the real world, the geniuses are people like Elon fucking Musk. He's not a genius. Don't, don't call him a genius. He's a genius. No, he isn't. He's a rich guy who pays geniuses. Fair. Fair. 
That's not a... He ain't Tony Stark. He's Justin fucking Hammer. Okay, fair. He was on yeah. stage with Todd Howard from fucking Bethesda at E3. Come on now. I don't really know what that means, but yes. <laughs> it's good. It's good you don't know. It just It's okay. good. So next up, oh, uh, shit. Um, let's start New Jersey. We have back-to-back. Uh, -back, we have back-to-back -back airline security stuff. As we are so... Why? What is it about airline security that ends up being the Bermuda Triangle for this shit? It's a place where you go to lose your sanity. Customer entitlement bashes up against little... Fiefdoms, <laughs> and it all goes wrong. I'd say this this is pretty far down. This is this is some considerable entitlement. Newark Airport passenger tries to board plane with six smoke grenades and oh. carry on bag. What did I tell you about that? I mean, sorry. He did fly this week. I did, but I did not get picked up by TSA. A passenger at Newark Liberty International Airport tried to bring six smoke grenades through airport security checkpoint Sunday before boarding a flight to the Dominican Republic. TSA screeners spotted the smoke grenades tucked inside bubble wrap when reviewing the x-ray of his carry-on bag. Smoke grenades are not illegal, and the man does not face any charges. The passenger gave the smoke grenades to a friend who was at the airport but not traveling, he was then allowed through security to catch his flight. I mean, I guess if he didn't have anything else, and they're not illegal. But fine. still, I have been stopped. You put in your carry-on. Did I mention the time I was stopped for having a screwdriver, which are also not illegal? And it wasn't like, sir, you can't take that. Just sort of hand that. You have to throw it away or something. No, it was like, why do you have this? Why the fuck do you have this? Why you got a fucking screwdriver on a fucking plane? I'm like, I don't know. I thought I'd take the plane apart. Whatever. <laughs> but you didn't say that because you're not a fucking moron. No, I didn't. It was not. It, this wasn't like I was bringing an incendiary device. Look, smoke grenades. They're like, what do they do? They just put out smoke. Yes. And you know how they put out smoke? Fire. There's really only one way to make smoke. Don't, Tara, well, you say that. All the chemists in the audience are like, well, actually. Yeah, true. Well, well actually. I'm actually surprised he didn't be like, not true. Well, actually. I'm not an asshole. <laughs> well, I am an asshole. Just well, actually, Dan. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like you, because you're a whole different flavor of asshole. <laughs> also, like, I don't know if you know this about airplanes. But you can't open the windows. You can't. Pretty limited air supply Dis in an airplane. Despite so full of smoke, nobody's fucking breathing. Despite what the Twilight Zone may have taught you, you cannot, in fact, no. open the window on you can't a. Can't get some fresh air in there. The, 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 there's yeah, it's that's that's not happening. Like this dude was walking through the Newark airport, and they definitely made him throw away his fucking Powerade. But he figured the smoke grenades were going to be fine. I know. He's like, oh, yeah, what, what are they going to do? It's, it's not illegal. It's not against the law to do this. Maybe his plan was to fuck up the Newark airport. Which, like, except for... Too late. Ex yeah, except for the international terminal, it's already a dump. Yeah. I... Oh! But, you know... As bad as it is trying to, trying to board a plane with fucking incendiary devices, you know what's even worse? I bet we're going to find out. Trying to get on the plane with nothing at all. Naked man tried to get sued oh, through security oh. at Detroit Metro Airport. I was like, with no baggage? That's fine. That's great. No, no, nothing. A man removed far more than his shoes. Oh, your ag locker. Fuck you. 
A man removed far more than his shoes and belt before trying to pass through a TSA checkpoint at Detroit Metro Airport. The inexplicably naked man tried to pass through the metal detector around 6.30 a.m. Friday morning. Wayne County Airport Authority said in a statement, the man walked up to a checkpoint and disrobed. He then disconnected a stanchion or barrier, in case you didn't know what a stanchion is. You know those those, those metal poles yeah. that you clip the, 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 the little uh, guide? Th- that's called a stanchion. You so learned something. naked and then tried to jump the line. Yes. He uh, got naked, approached the metal detector, but security didn't let him through. He did not have a boarding pass. Well, no, it was in his pants. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where is he going to keep it? That's a fair point. <laughs> You know, I can understand being fed up with having to go through the fucking airport security and being like, well, they're going to look anyway. So fuck it. However, like it's really just the belt and shoes they need you to take off. It's really just not the, the whole shoes. kit. It's like, I heard you were going to get like naked pictures of me with the with the backscatter machine. I'm just saving you the trouble. I'm saving electricity. My whole outfit is made of vibranium. So it all has to come off. I... And again, this is another case of you couldn't pay me to get naked in an airport. No. Like people that hook up in airport bathrooms and I'm like, do you just want every disease? You're going to find like, you're going to discover super chlamydia. Right. Like, do you just want parts of you to rot off? The fun parts, no less. Any part. Well, yeah, anymore. but still, I just could, could, God, don't get naked in an airport. Not even just for, for decency. Look, we've all seen a dick. We've all seen a vagina. Wait, I should probably rephrase that. Not, maybe not everybody has, but, you know, it's just basically, okay, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. But on the other hand, just for your own self-preservation, don't get naked in an airport. Also, they're so airports are cold. They are. They keep it really cold at the damn airport. Depends on the I, man. I've flown in the summer. I flew to Con Bravo once, and the airport was like a fucking sauna. I'm always I always freeze my ass off at the airport. What was it? I, th- I think it was Dulles because Dull. I know a lot of airports have glass walls and whatnot, but Dulles has these like floor to ceiling glass walls. Oh, so that sun. It was just like sitting under God's magnifying glass. <laughs> You're the bug. Did I say magnifying? Magnifying. I can't talk words. <laughs> My question is, like, what was his plan? Was his plan to get through security and then go back for his clothes? I think that's going to work. This is not a... Uh, why did you do that? I was Nothing so... Lo- good. I also love the stock photo here is people walking in McNamara Terminal at Detroit Metro Airport. Like, it's like, just sort of gla- like the poor dude rolling his carry-on bag when he finds out that he's the stock photo they chose for this story. He's like, this, it, uh, no! <laughs> Wasn't me! His friends uh... are all like, dude, did you? No! <sighs> okay. What one of the most unsettling experiences, I don't care if you rent, if you own, if anything, is finding uh, some sort of creature in your house that doesn't belong there. And I'm not just talking like a cockroach or a spider or something. I'm talking like there's sometimes um, we have in our house, we have one of those uh, in the bathroom. We have one of the ceiling fans, right? And it's got a port that sends it up to the roof. And frogs get in there. So you're in the bathroom and there's like this little tiny green tree frog and it's a little unsettling because you want they're cute, but you're not you're not expecting. Hi, how you doing? Hey, Simba. We've had and this is the we aren't even in the woods. We're in the suburbs here. We've had stuff like um, over the years, possums and raccoons. It's a little unsettling. What? Like inside the house? Um, one of them got into the porch and wouldn't leave. Um, bat. Bat in the house has happened. Bird. 
bird in the house? I only had birds get in the house. And Sarah, I think I told a, a story about the bird on the Christmas tree. Were you here when the bird got in the house? No, I was at work. That's right, you were at work. But the bird. The poor thing I was so, so confused. Sad that I missed that. <laughs> um. However, uh, this guy wins. This guy absolutely fucking wins at the, well, guess what got into my house? Bear falls asleep in wardrobe after entering home. A black bear has been found. He's like, take that, Goldilocks, Bre breaking and entering, bitch. <laughs> Revenge! <laughs> the tables, they have turned! Just fucking right. Black Bear has been found sleeping in a wardrobe after apparently locking himself into a room in a home in the U.S. state of Montana. Look at that face. Oh, he's poor bear. Alerted to, to the intrusion in Butler Creek, police say the large mammal just yawned when officers knocked on the window <laughs> to wake it up. I'm so tired. <laughs> Eventually had to be tranquilized and removed. Police warned people to lock their homes as the bear reportedly tried at least two other doors in the area. The bears are getting scary, man. They said the bear the had... bears driving people's cars. <laughs> They're like, look, we see all y'all with this good shit. We want the good shit. We're sick of the caves and shit. You've got like like a like a, a mock tutor semi-detached. Come on. So is that like reverse Goldilocks? Yes, that's what Tara was saying. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Great minds. Um it's, they said the bear had somehow entered a laundry room and managed to bolt the door from inside. It began ripping the room apart before apparently feeling tired and climbing into the wardrobe for a nap. Poor bear. I know. He's like, I just I just wanted a nice place to, to lie down. I don't understand this cave. <laughs> I like that. Picnic basket in here. I like that he was just hitting up the neighborhood for like, this one work? No. This one work? Yeah. No. This means this guy is master doorknobs, okay? That's what I'm saying. Like, how many stories have we done where a bear got in the car and locked the door? They understand handles. Handles are one thing, okay? Because car handles, you could slip. You don't need thumbs for a car handle. You just slip your hand in, pull, the door comes open. Doorknobs, on the other hand. Yeah. That takes a little dexterity going on there. Yeah. They're coming for us. The bears are coming for us. You know, they'd probably do a better job than we have. It's true. I, for one, welcome our bear overlords. <laughs> he's cute, too. He's, a, he's like a big, happy puppy. He's a cute little murder tank. He is. They're adorable. You got the big set. That is the weirdest thing about bears. They're some of the most fearsome beasts, and they got the big, weird, puppy, sad eyes. Yeah. But hippos are like that, too. Adorable murder tanks. They flap their little ears. Yeah. They sweat. And they will know, fuck your shit right up. <sighs> Poor bear. I'm glad I'm glad they just tranquilized him and took and no, nothing know, bad happened. Too. Just like I'm glad they just tranked him and sent him home. Listen, buddy, come on. You don't have to go <laughs> home, but you can't stay here. Gotta go, man. Gotta come on. Last call. Uh all right. Let's let's move on to um Japan. And this is this is from the Department of the Balls on this guy. Shoplifting. There are a lot of rules when it comes to how you, as a uh, a retail employee, can and are allowed to handle shoplifting. And people try to take advantage of that. Oh yes. That you can. It's like you can't fucking touch me and shit. Um, this guy tried and failed. Man in uh, Fukuoka. Arrested for shoplifting a 49-inch TV. Shoplifting has long been an issue in Japan, with retail staff going to great lengths to combat it, such as being dragged by cars or covered the entire ceiling in security cameras. Despite all this, the problem not only continues, but appears to be getting bolder. On June 16th, at a uh, Geo electronics store in Onojo City, a 23-year-old man entered shortly before midnight 
picked up a packaged 49-inch TV, and just walked out the entrance without paying. Uh, it's no surprise the Gao staff easily saw this man stroll through the front doors with the 65 by 110 centimeter or 26 by 43 inch uh, appliance weighing 26 pounds. However, the manager proved to be the truly smooth operator in the incident. Rather than confronting the suspect and risking damage to the $422 set, he simply watched as the man loaded into his car and made a note of the license plate number. After that, he placed a call to the police, who easily caught the suspect just as he arrived home. Uh, police intercepted him in the parking lot of his home, with the TV still inside his car. Caught red-handed, the suspect admitted to the theft, saying, I stole it because I wanted to use it at home. Cool story. But generally, there is an exchange of currency. Yeah, it's not just, well, but I wanted it. You're not Rocket Raccoon. No, but I wanted it more. <laughs> but no, sir, you see, you don't understand. I wanted it more. That's, that's not how this works. No. It's just... It... Ooh. Like, the, I tend to think Americans are the ballsiest assholes on the planet, but I guess not. Because like, I can't picture someone just picking up a 50-inch TV and walking out. Oh, come on, Tara. You've been to Walmart. You know. Someone, ha someone has definitely tried that at some point. I just, I, I do love that the owner was like... We did have somebody walk up with shopping bags and just sweep our whole front table of fragrances. We had like a big Mother's Day display at the front of the store of all fragrances. And somebody literally just ran in with a shopping bag, swept the tables and ran for it. And probably got like two grand worth of perfumes. Our loss prevention regional guy came in the next week and was like, so what can we do? What, what do you know? And I'm like, well, we can stop putting $2,000 worth of fragrances within three feet of the door. <laughs> yeah, but you know and what? he was like, you know, I heard about that. I'm going to pass that up the chain. So, you know, you, you know what, they, what that person probably didn't do? Have a license plate on their ass. Yeah. Because I, I, I love how this guy it just... He, you knew this guy was his car thinking, I got away with it. They aren't coming for me. They, they, they can't find me. I'm scot-free and clear. What yeah. are those blue lights? Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. They just calmly stuck back. It's like, okay, got a license plate. Done. We'll just wait. That's well, pretty slick. We'll see that TV again. You just wait. Rome Rajal says, how the fuck do you shoplift a 49-inch TV? With confidence, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Did he have the decency to shove it down his pants? I... How would that even work? How, how big did they say it was? He looked look like SpongeBob. <laughs> Twenty six by forty three inches. That's two foot by three two foot by three and a half feet. Those better be some stretchy pants, man. <laughs> those those are like those would be more amazing than like Bruce Banner's pants. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh uh, Bob Lobster in the channel is pointing out that uh, Walmart vests allow TVs to be stolen. Remember that story we had a while back? The guy selling yeah. the, bought the vest. Well, just for, retail yeah. jobs I've worked, they lost, like, God forbid you accuse somebody who's clearly stealing of stealing. You're not allowed to, you can't offend the person who's clearly stealing. So you just have to be annoyingly nice to them and hope that they'll drop the item. Otherwise, you let it walk the fuck out. So at that point, it becomes a battle of wills of who can who can just pretty much with it's an endurance battle. Who could just withstand it? Because your job is to live up their ass and just try to make them self conscious. But the thing is, half shoplifters don't have any fucking shame. <laughs> well, no, you know. they're shoplifting. They don't care. Like when I worked at Old Navy, the thing was you had to like name the item you saw them take and be like, oh, can I show you a top to go with those jeans? 
And the idea is that like, I saw you take those jeans, but I'm not saying that I'm giving you the chance to avoid shame by putting them back. They don't care. <laughs> They're just like, no, I'm good. And then what do you do? Like the, your job is to be passive aggressive and it doesn't work. That's my retail rant for today. That's why I'm nice to cats now. Our last story this week is I, I didn't know it was possible to be the winner of drunk driving. I did not know this was an option. Oh. But a man in Poland this week became the grand champion of drunk driving. Oh, dear. Drunk man invades Polish town driving a Soviet tank. Wow. Okay. A drunk driver was arrested last week for driving a tank through the streets of, and I'm going to mess this up. I apologize. I think I'm saying this correctly. Pajensko. No, I'm not saying that right. Sure. Pajens Poland. I apologize. <laughs> it's on the screen. I I don't there there's like there's an accent under the e and I I don't I I'm not I'm not versed in it. I apologize. Yeah, I don't The vehicle a so like it should be on the it looks like it should be on the back of a hockey jersey. <laughs> Uh, the vehicle, a Soviet T-55 tank that's at least 60 years old, belonged to the Polish military. But on June 12th, shortly before 10 p.m., it looked like it was attacking residents who called the police. According to uh, Polish newspapers, the unnamed driver, 49, was only responsible for, footing, pu for putting the tank on and off its trailer. But the trailer broke, and when it was being repaired, he drunkenly decided to take the war machine out on a joyride. By the time cops arrived, he had parked the 40-ton machine, which was uninsured, on a main street and was standing nearby. Another man, believed to be his passenger, was also present. Not clear if the muddled motorist caused any permanent damage to the street, but he was arrested and, once he sobered up, questioned by police. He faces... Yeah, tank will fuck up. Streets aren't made for tanks. This is impressive, made though. for that kind of weight. He uh, faces... Thanks for the story here. Uh oh. Of oh, no. when I was in, uh, there was a guy who basically got in the in, army, not prison. Yeah, basically got into a shit ton of trouble for driving an APC through the drive-through at the Burger King on camp on on base and obliterated the parking lot because it's not made for asphalt. No. <laughs> they have those grippy things like and they weigh several tons. This one weighed sixty-six tons. It said. <laughs> This is now here's the thing that kind of blows me away. He faces up to eight years in prison if charged with creating, quote, direct danger of catastrophe in land, water, or air traffic, or two years for driving under the influence. Poland don't fucking play. He stole a tank. Well, no, just for two years driving under the influence. Just for the drunk driving. Good. Poland don't play. I, I mean, told you when I was in Ireland, it was 5,000 euro if you didn't pick up your dog shit. And You're over here, around. <laughs> over here, it's like, didn't we take your license? Oh, yeah. How many drunk driving is this? Five. Five. I got a punch card. <laughs> and, and Poland is like, no, goodbye, jail. No, no. Uh, Piensno. Thank you, Michael. That's uh, Piensno. That would not have been my guess. Pien is it Piensno? It's Piensno. 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 Oh, well, come on, guys. You're screwing with yeah, me here. I've forgotten that Eastern European languages, that J acts like a Y. But damn. Piensno. I am, okay, the eight years for the tank, damn. The two years for the drunk driving, Damn, they are not screwing around. Don't get drunk and steal a fucking tank. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess they're at the, they're kind of at the point over there that we should have been a long time ago, which is like, we ain't got time for this shit. No! We ain't got time for this shit. I mean, think about, 
There are people that within their lifetime were around for the last time tanks rolled into Poland. Yeah. So they probably don't want to fuck with that shit. They're like, you know what? No. There's yeah. like one ninety. There's like one ninety year old dude in his house looking out the window. He's like, Irma, get the shotgun. It's happening again. <laughs> Europe doesn't really fuck with that shit, man. No, they, don't. they got they got better memories than we do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so I guess the first thing we learned this week is aside from stealing a tank as not to do, um, don't drive drunk in Poland. They do not fuck around. <laughs> You know what? You get designated driver, baby. Designated driver. Um, we've learned that that shoplifting requires uh, an intense lack of shame. It's true. Um, that's not a guarantee of success. That's just to get your foot in the door. Yeah. Um, we've learned that bears, so like us, <laughs> in that they're trying to take our shit. The, the pairs are looking for squatters rights. I think they've gone to it like they've looked up some legal shit is yeah. what they've done. Um Oh we, now I'm picturing a bear lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. I don't understand your modern ways. I'm just a bear. I'm just from a the bear. forest. Who's a lawyer? Who's a lawyer? Um, we've learned that uh, you can't get through security by doing the strip search for them. No. It, you are not making their job easier, in fact. You are... <laughs> we've learned where smoke comes from. Yeah. That's, that's an important thing to know in your adult life. We've learned where smoke comes from. Finally, this week we've learned um, if you're going to try to be an activist and work against something, d bare minimum Wikipedia, motherfucker. Come on, do do some basic googling. Just it's... before you start your petition. Also, I dearly hope that our savior Leslie Jones sends you to the bad place. Well, no, because then you get to hang out with Ted Danson. 